Okay, for this project you're going to make a maze. Uh, you can see up here there's an example one. Um, I'm just going to run you through a few things that are on there and then you actually get the code given to you that you can adapt on the web page. But um, I've got three sprites. So I've got um, my character which is at the bottom down here um, and I've shrunk that character. So basically if my character was too big to start with I literally come up to here where it says shrink, click on shrink and then double click on the character and every time I click on the character it makes it smaller so even if you bring in an image that's too big you can use this to actually shrink it down um, I'll show you that now so if I bring in another figure anyone will do for now bring the bat in that bat's way too big I can click up here on the shrink and every time I click on it it shrinks down smaller so if I wanted to use a smaller character in my maze I could do it that way um, and then once I've clicked off it that would still be too big to fit between the gaps I'd make it a little bit smaller again and that would be perfect. I'm not going to use that one, so I'm going to come back to my bat and I'm going to delete it. Um, but that's what I did with my Pico character to make it small enough to fit between the um, walls of my maze. Okay, I've got something called a goal. The goal is just a, a square shape that my character has got to reach. So when my character touches this pink square, the game finishes. While the game's running, there's a timer here that's going to count. So basically, I want to get from the beginning to the end as fast as I possibly can. So I'll just show it to you running first of all, so you get an idea of how it works. So I'm going to click my flag, and I'm going to use my keyboard, and I can move around. And you can see as I move around, if I hit a wall, it kind of I've got to steer him through the gaps. And on the right-hand side there, I've got a timer running to see how fast I can get through. And that's the basically the competition of it. I'm getting stuck there. So I'm using my up, down, left, right arrow keys. Bang. And then as soon as I hit the pink, my timer stops. And that's my score, basically. So the next person will have to try and get through even faster. Um, obviously, the first time you do the maze, you're not sure which is the best route through. So you're going to get better the more you play it. Now, I'm going to explain how you make the maze itself. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that, some of the code that's being used to do it. So um, first of all, the maze itself. So to actually create this shape, um, I've gone for a draw paint new sprite instead of importing one. Now you could have one that you've got from um, the internet or one that you've drawn on another piece of software that you could bring in using this one. But you could draw it yourself by clicking on here. So this is now set up a new sprite. It hasn't got a name at the moment. So I could call this one before I started. I could click on the info and I could call it maze2. Okay, and then I come over here and I've got various options. So this is my drawing palette. That's for drawing straight lines. Now, a quick hint, if I want to draw a line that is completely straight, all I do is hold down shift whilst I drag. So I've chosen my line tool. I've, I'll choose a color, so black's a good one to, to use because it gets the walls like this. This is the thickness of my wall, so I can make it bigger or smaller. And if I want to draw a line, say across here, I just hold down shift as I drag. I'm going to leave a gap for the starting point. Okay, I'm going to go up. I'm going to go across. I'm going to leave a, an exit point somewhere. I'm going to try and work out how to get these so that they match up. Now, if my line is not quite as thick as I went off the edge of it, I can always go over it again. And basically, anywhere where I want to put part of my maze, I just hold down shift and I draw my lines. If I want to make spaces in them afterwards I can always erase a little bit of a gap and basically you'll see as I go through this thing builds the sprite so I can come back and edit it again afterwards or I can do it all in one go if I get anything wrong I can use the undo here to undo the last thing I've done um, and, and it's very like using paint so that's the best way of making up your um, your sprite I'll click here to go back to those sprites um, if I could have actually put, if I stay on that sprite, I could have put a background color into it if I wanted to. So I'll do a fill color. So I wanted my whole thing to be yellow in the background. I can click in there and it will make that sprite yellow. Now you can see over on this side, that sprite's not in the center of the screen. All I would do is grab it and move it, position it where I wanted to. So that's covering up my original sprite at the moment. So I'm, I, don't, I don't want to use that one. I'm going to get rid of that again. Hit delete. But that's how I, I made the first one. Uh, the pink dot was exactly the same thing. All I did was I, I created a new sprite and drew a pink square in the middle of it. It doesn't matter what color I use. The reason that I want a, a color of something is that I can program it to say that when my character hits a particular color, stop the game. So that's how that part of it works. 
Okay, now for the um, actual code. So the only thing that's got code on it is um, my character. So if I click onto Pico and click on scripts, this is where all the code is. There's nothing on the maze, there's no nothing on the goals. There's only one place to put it. Um, I'll zoom in a bit so you can see these. Now I, I will provide this for you on the web page anyway, but just to go through a few of the things to explain how it works. So I've got this when clicked flag. So this is how the program starts. So when I click on the flag up here, it all starts running. The first thing it does is it says go to this position. This position is somewhere down by there. You can see the XY coordinates of the character when you move them around. So all I'm doing is at the very beginning of the game putting the character to the to the start. Okay, I'm using a forever loop. That means that what's between the top and the bottom of this thing carries on forever. And the only time it stops at the bottom here, okay, I've got an if then which says stop everything is when I get my um, object touching the goal and the goal I've, I've renamed this pink box goal when it hits there it stops everything so that's what this little bit at the end does the rest of it these things are repeated four times so it's exactly the same piece of code four times if I zoom in on that code itself and explain so basically within this if loop here then we're using something called an if then loop okay it's basically saying if the up arrow is pressed then I want to change my Y value by 4 so you can see that the X and Y okay the X and Y axis I'm saying to go up I want my Y to increase by 4 okay now costume I'll explain in a minute but touching color black means that if I hit one of the walls then I want it to change that Y value by minus 4 so in essence what's happening is as I press my up button the Y axis is increasing by 4 it goes upwards if it touches black it pulls back again by 4 so it allows it to bounce off these um, walls all the other values in all these other bits of code are exactly the same so if I want the down arrow it's still the Y axis but this time it's doing minus 4 because it's going downwards and if I hit a wall it increases by 4 so it basically bounces it back upwards the left and right work exactly the same except now we're working with X values okay it'll make a lot more sense when you make it for yourself the last bit of code that's in each of these blocks is this one called next costume now what's interesting about some of these um, sprites like this one is they have what's called costumes with them so a costume is a different skin so you can see here that this one called Pico has got four different skins. So if I click through them quick, it makes it look like Pico is walking. So on the actual big screen when I do this, when I run it in presentation mode, I can actually see Pico walking. Not all of your sprites will have the, the, the different skins that you can use like this. So you might need to check before you choose which character and find one which has got different um, skins. So, sorry, I keep calling them skins. In, in uh, Scratch, they call them costumes. So that's what this little purple thing says, next costume. So if this first case, if it's running when it does this change Y by 4 the first time, if it's running costume 1, then it changes to costume 2. Then it does this again and runs costume 3 and so on. It keeps cycling round and round and round until I press a different button. So when I then press the down arrow, again, it catches a new costume and so on. So it makes it look like it's actually um, walking. Okay, so that pretty much explains all of that code. Um, you've used lots of these if then, and literally you drag them all out. But one thing you can do is you can use a duplicate feature. So once you've set one one set of code up, you can right click and you can duplicate that code, and then you can just drag it into position and change the x's and y's around. So you don't have to actually drag every single thing out every single time. Okay, the last little bit of code that's in here. There's another separate bit over here. This bit's a bit more interesting. This one is basically saying, um, again, when clicked it starts, and again we're using a loop, so it keeps running this thing forever, but it's making something called S equivalent to timer. Now what does all that mean? Well, okay, when you go into sensing, there's something here called timer, and if you click it, you can see up here it, it puts this timer feature in. Now the unfortunate thing about the timer is it never stops, so even when the game stops, the timer keeps going. This one keeps resetting and going all over again, but I'm going to turn that off. So we, we actually want to make use of that timer, but we have to make our own little clock. So I've made a variable. I've gone into data. I've clicked on this one called make a variable, and I've given it a name. So I gave it, I, I called it S. I'll call this one T, 
just so you can see how it works and I click OK and you can see here now that I've got a variable called T a variable is like a special um, object that will hold values for you that's all you need to know about it but now I've got this one called T it's not doing anything at the moment because it's not connected to anything um, in fact I'm gonna take my tick back off again now I showed you how to make it and I'm gonna delete it again because I don't need that one okay but this is the one I made earlier the one called S it's ticked which means it shows on the screen okay I can move it around a bit and um, but over here I'm using one little bit of code okay I've dragged this one that says set and I have put it over here and I said I've chosen S it's the only thing I can pick I'm setting my score that's what the S stands for for me score to timer so all I did was I dragged the timer object from here and dragged it into that box so it's saying make the S equivalent to the timer and that basically is how you make your maze that's what you're gonna have a go at now you can use whatever characters you want you can make the maze as hard or as easy as you want you can use whatever drawing techniques you want if you want to add sound effects in then you can do that so per perhaps when your object hits a wall you add a sound effect in okay it makes a noise you can drag the noises in from the sounds file okay there's lots of different things here that you can choose from but you probably just want to use player sounds you would drag that out and drop that in so it would make a noise when it hits something okay good luck